What's going on guys? Welcome back to This Is IT. We are going to talk about something new that Cisco's coming out with, the Catalyst 9K, which might sound a little weird if you have heard of Catalyst, uh, but we have Rajesh here and he is kind of the architect, but I'll let you speak for yourself, Rajesh. Tell us about yourself. Um, yeah. Uh, hey folks, uh, I'm Rajesh. I'm a principal engineer in the um, switching hardware and systems group in Cisco. Yeah, and this is the new Catalyst 9600. So I mean, it, it, the switch looks really cool. I mean, can you show us a bit about like the internals or like what you think is really cool about this switch? Yeah, so maybe let me start with the exteriors first. Yeah, go for it. It's a pretty small uh, box for the bandwidth and the capacity which it can support. And if you look at the um, chassis uh, by itself, so it's a uh, six slot system. So you can, uh, you can see the slot numbers are marked uh, up in the front or the fan tray. So what do the 6500 have? So, the, so uh, one thing uh, which is carried forward from the 6500 is uh, the overall appearance of the chassis uh, in terms of its simplicity and how the cards and um, cooling and uh, power supplies all make together into one platform. Yeah. So very similar to the 6500, it is a side-to-side uh, -side airflow system and uh, the fan tray sits on the um, uh, left side of the chassis, as, you, as is shown here. Can you show us that? You pull that, yeah, pull that so sucker out, out see. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, that's you can cool. see the fans. That's uh, it's a three by three array of fans which uh, pull this system. And basically each row handles uh, two f uh, slots in the chassis, if you can look at how it aligns. Oh yes. Um, now, and you can take it from the back or the front, right? Yeah, and uh, the cool feature of this chassis is that the uh, fan tray can be extracted from either from the front or from the back. That's cool. Why, yeah. why did you guys design that? I've heard there was like a clever reason why you... Yeah, the, one of the reasons why that is very important is um, it depends on how you cable out the interfaces which is there on the system. Yeah. So if you look at it, um, you would want to, like when you plug in the um, optics or the copper, in yeah. the, the cables which you need to go into, the, into each of the line cards, yeah. you would want to make it go out uh, evenly on the right and left. Yeah. And if you come out on the left side, you are going to block uh, it access makes a lot to of the sense, yeah. fan tray. So in order to overcome that, having it accessible from the rear makes it... Makes uh, a lot of sense. Yeah, that, no. Now I have to know, and I don't know if you maybe you were part of that team, but how did how did a, like a company that designs cars design a switch? Um, some of the inputs which they would like us to use cannot be actually be yeah. executed in practice. Some of the things which are pretty cool, which they helped us uh, yes. get there, is um, for example um, how the curvature of uh, of these um, the folds of the um, sheet metals are done. It's amazing. Uh, like it's if you, if you look oh, at yeah. some legacy um, uh, chassis, like, for example, if you look at 6500, for example, yeah. it's the, um, the um, each of the uh, the sheet metal plates they are riveted together and yeah. they just form That's right. Uh, right and square edges. Yeah. And if you look here, for example, um, uh, if you just look at the front of the chassis, you don't find any rivet in the front. For example, right? Mm -hmm. This is one cool feature. Yeah. Uh, earlier, we would have had uh, in order to ensure the mechanical stability of this, you would have had rivets all over the place, yeah. and you would have covered. Um, you would even you might even end up having rivets on the logo itself. And if you look at it, um, so in a, um, uh, so these these are the extra ones which compensate for the ones which we took out on the top of the chassis. That's okay, really cool. Right? Okay. Yeah, it it looks. I mean, you wouldn't say a pretty switch, but it is pretty. It's not like a typical like a, like sixty five hundreds was like like an industrial thing. David, yeah, I want to exactly. hear you say it, David. I, I want to hear you say it. It's a sexy switch. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> 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 yeah, Lauren, come and say it. <laughs> the other thing which uh, Penny Farina helped us to design well um, are the car ejectors. If you look at how sculpted uh, the handles are, like each of these levers and how they, uh, how user friendly they are, this is something totally new on mm, makes it uh, really interesting. So you have to, you have to. Use oh, it's a, that's a two-hand hand thing. Okay. Yeah, you can't do it with one hand. I, I, I want to feel this in motion. Exclusive stuff. You've already failed, dude. Oh, yeah. That's no, nice. That, that feels high quality. That's nice. Wow. Yeah. 
So one, some of the comments which you got from customers is that yeah, the the um, handles they are they feel sturdy. Yeah. Uh, whereas in the past they used to have something which just need to work. Yeah, right? exactly. So this is more than that. It's not, yeah. it's not just industrial. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so uh, the other things which we, uh, yeah we didn't do this. Do we need to do this? Do whatever you like. It's brilliant. So we could print out that's the nice. sticker, and mm. you can see how the front looks like. It's, yeah, that's great. It, it just goes through. Yeah, you push it in. I'll pull that going in. That's nice. Very cool. So I mean, that's the outside. What can you tell us about the yeah. like internals so, and? Let's go into the internals. Um, let's go so to the, the guts. Um, so if you, so the middle two slots are where the supervisor will go, or uh, what is traditionally called the soups. Um, so you said that again. The two middle slots, yeah. Yeah, the two middle slots, which is three and four. And so it, on the sixty-five hundred, was it wasn't it at the top, or was it also in the middle? E, actually, the sixty-five hundred had a lot of legacy, yeah. but um, uh, the very earlier versions of it did support the supervisor on the. Um, uh, upper slots, yeah. but eventually um, uh, all the implementations ended up having the center. There is an electrical reason for it. I was going to ask you what's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason is to have it evenly spread out to the connection to the um, line cards. They're symmetrical. Oh, that and makes sense. You equalize the length, right? Yeah. So okay. if you had uh, the supervisor on the top, and um, so the 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 card which is furthest away from it will yeah. suffer more losses in yeah. terms of electrical. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So you would want to keep it the lowest possible, and as also the very symmetrical, so that the implementation is uh, easier. Yeah. So if I please, let's pull out the soup and take oh, a wow, look at that. Hey, hold on, I need to see that. Wow, that's beautiful, dude. It's beautiful. That's the right word. No, no, no. That's lovely. Sorry, go on. <laughs> David's having a moment. You might want to take a little bit of time with David. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the main things which you see on the supervisor are the three uh, UAD P A six, which uh, sit very close to the backplane, which uh, is the this is the first A six, second A six, and the third A six. And the the remaining big heat sink which you see over here is the CPU, uh, the CPU with its memory and with its storage. Um, so these form the critical major component which you can see on the supervisor. Which one's the storage? This is the storage uh, it, which can be used for uh, applications which can run on the supervisor. Is that an SSD card or is that the slot? That's just a slot. Yeah? This is a um, location for install. So this particular module I have here is showing a blank yeah. which you take it out and install the disk drive. Or the so you can have a disk in your switch That's correct. for what? It's for storing uh, application metadata. Like um, it, it can be an additional application which you could run on the on the um, CPU on the supervisor in addition to the iOS which runs uh, to um, run the switch and the platform. Oh wow! So uh, I heard you could run like Docker containers or something on the switch. Something like that. Yes. That's yeah, brilliant. That could be one. Brilliant. One of the applications. That's so, crazy. So. The, can you just explain for people who are not familiar with switches, what is an what is what is an ASIC or what are these things? So do? I'll probably need to go to something more basic in a sense like uh, the, um, the 9600 uses a centralized forwarding architecture, which means that you the forwarding decisions are not actually done on the line card. Oh, that's, that's very different that's too. That's very different, yeah. isn't it? So Sorry. It, uh, this is the, all the switching is done on the supervisor. So the intelligence is here. All the intelli all the forwarding intelligence are built on the supervisor, and these are the devices or the, the ASICs uh, which will implement all the um, um, packet forwarding features for the system. So uh, can you so on the line cards? Can you show what it shows what a line card looks yeah. like? Yeah, I'll see one of those. So if you pull out the line card, if you see um, the line card in comparison is actually pretty simple. Yeah. Um, I, it has just the front panel optics, um, which uh, onto which you can connect um, one gig, ten gig, twenty five gig of the higher speed optics, which are needed for all the um, uh, Ethernet interfaces, and the physical layer devices. So what sits underneath these things are the physical layer devices, and beyond that, uh, it just connects into the backplane and goes over the um, uh, backplane of the chassis. So if I understand right, if you had like a line card here. I mean, so let's say a line card here. Yeah. A line card here. 
if traffic needs to go, say, from a port here to a port here, does it go all the way to the supervisors? Right? Yes. So the, um, the way the traffic would have moved, like for example, if you take uh, um, any two ports here. Yeah. Um, even on the same line card, yeah. On the, even on the same line card, exactly. So um, the traffic would go through the five physical layer devices and it will enter the supervisor. Um, probably, let's say, if you take a port on this side of the um, line card, yes. it will end up onto this ASIC. Yes. And if the destination port happens to be a port which is on this side, it will traverse through these multiple ASICs, arrive at the um, egress um, ASIC where it needs to get out, yeah. and it will come back all the way through the back plane into the file level device and come out. So why do, is there a reason why you went from distributed to centralized like architecture? This architecture will get you simplicity. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at the line card, it makes the line card absolutely simple, right? Yeah. Um, and the software implementation is also simplified just by having all the forwarding located on the, the supervisor. Because yeah, in the old days, I mean, Chuck and I were talking about this the other day, you would have to run IO, like an image on the line cards and the That's right, yeah. And if you have to yeah. upgrade, it's a, it's a nightmare. So this simplifies so it, is that right? That simplifies it, yeah. So so the story for IS, ISSU, um, all, I mean, that will improve uh, a lot compared to the, in the past. And what about speed? I mean, you don't have to give us figures, but like in general, if I, is wasn't it quicker to just move from here to here on the line card instead of going all the way to... Uh, the that, central is, device. that is correct. So if you look at it just from the packet flow perspective, yes, that would have been a lower latency path. I mean, it's so fast, isn't it? Because I mean, you, these things are like, you can go 100 gig on this, is that right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, like, these, it's these, like negligible, like you don't even notice it's like, it, right? It's line speed, is it? Yeah, it is line speed, yes. So in other, so in other words, in, to answer the question, my own question, it's, <laughs> it, there's no like delay even going to the supervisor and coming back. It, it doesn't slow the line rate down, is that right? I just understood in the past, one of the reasons that they did distributed architecture was supposedly, if I understand it right, is that if you moved from one port to another on the same line card, it was quicker than sending it up to the supervisor. Was that like, is that incorrect? That is, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that is not correct, but um, the advantage of the distributed architecture is that it will scale better. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the centralized architecture, you are actually, limited eventually by what the ASICs on the supervisor can do. So, and yeah. and um, but the, the greatest advantage of centralized switching is that it will uh, get you lower cost oh, that makes sense. Um, uh, than okay. a distributed system. In a distributed system you would have had more hardware to make the um, yeah to get to that scale, which is actually future-proof, right? So you would have more hardware and you might even have a forwarding ASIC sitting here yeah. making a decision as to, oh, this packet is actually destined to be another port on the same card and it has to make a decision to send it back on this board, right? So that decision requires extra hardware and ASICs to sit on the line card. If I understand right, like today, these line cards here, if you put a 100 gig in here, this yes. one would be disabled. Because that's a limitation of the of the uh, supervisor, that is, is that right? That's a limitation of but, the supervisor. But when you upgrade right. the supervisor, then in the future, you would get that. Yeah, yeah. The line cards can last multiple generations of the of this system. Yeah. Um, by upgrading a supervisor, you would certainly have more features or uh, more speeds and more bandwidth, mm -hmm. which uh, which was not possible earlier. So what do you, what do you, what what do you find exciting about the switch compared to like previous generations? I mean. Is there any specific feature that you really like, like proud about or excited about? Like when you guys finished it, you were like, yes. Yeah. Like you just it gave each other. Yeah, so there is one cool feature which yeah. is actually implemented in the layer one device. So that's, that's what makes the line card very unique. The devices, the, uh, I used a very simple term, I simply said it's a phi or the physical layer device. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what, um, what is that? It's a bit more than that, even though the eventual uh, function of the device is still phi layer, it doesn't look at what packets are flowing, but it has this feature of being able to talk to two planes of forwarding engines. So one thing I didn't talk about earlier is that you could have Redundant supervisor, right? So, so the the supervisor which you took out from slot four, there could be another supervisor in slot three, and they work together yeah. uh, to form a hot standby system. Yeah. Um, now the um, the 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 file layer device on the line card um, has this unique feature, uh, which is which we call internally as a heatless mux. 
which may, which would uh, make a decision as to which uh, which forwarding plane it extracts the packet from. Oh wow! So um, so in the, in the egress direction, um, it knows which uh, of the supervisor is active, and it only takes out the packets which are coming on from that supervisor going out to the physical interface in this way. And on the increased direction, it actually replicates packets going to both forwarding planes. So that helps um, improving the, um, the, the, the convergence, convergence time. The convergence from, yeah. time for the um, uh, system. So for, for example, when you have uh, high availability events like a um, supervisor failover, yeah. um, the, the cutover time for uh, rebuilding all the interfaces and um, routes uh, is much faster than what was happening earlier with a distributed system. So how fast are we talking? It's a, an order of magnitude higher. Than the 65s? Than even the 6500, yeah, wow. that's right, yeah. That's amazing. And, and, um, and because of this um, uh, packet replication and the egress decision which is done on a, layer, on a file layer device, um, when a switch over happens, that is when you cut over from one supervisor to the other, yeah. the drops are very, very tiny. That's good. So, um, in theory, we should be able to get just only one packet drop per physical interface. That's something unprecedented than what was done before. So, when a cutover happens, usually you would get um, much higher drops, like mm -hmm. usually in the um, hundreds of milliseconds yeah. um, mm -hmm. and uh, then the control plane to take over uh, itself take additional so it used to converge probably um, in something close to a second or so. So, but, to, put it, so to put it in perspective like what what kind of application would be affected by that failover where it would be a bad thing and why it was doing this gonna fix that? That may be a voice or yeah, a but, database but replication is, or it's something? It's for a failure scenario yeah, so, like if the one supervisor dies. Yeah, so that, that's one scenario, but the other scenario which is more realistic is a upgrade of software on yeah. the system. Mm -hmm. So when you are upgrading the software, the, um, you are basically cutting over from one to the other. So, so you basically upgrade the so software on the standby, and then you cut over to that, and then you bring up the other one, right? So mm -hmm. you are, that cutover uh, would have cost you uh, a lot of mm -hmm. traffic drop, which yeah. is minimized by that. So that's how... Uh, um, that, that's a big thing. Yeah, that, yeah. that would be yeah. Thing, yes. I mean, it's really cool that you don't have to upgrade the line cards, and then you have this like small window uh, when you upgrade the supervisors. Yeah. That's brilliant. So that's like one of the features you're really proud of, yeah? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. That's yeah. a massive thing. And we yeah. have put yeah. Uh, yeah, really a lot of effort to get that to work correctly. So yeah, then um, uh, one thing, uh, I, so one of the challenges which we have with all the newer systems um, uh, is uh, handling thermals, right? So handling if you look at, thermals? Yeah. yeah. Um, like heat and stuff, yeah. Yeah, the power dissipated per, yeah. I don't know, like terabits of switching. Yeah. So if you look at the supervisor, um, you see this uh, hefty heat sinks on the ASICs. Yeah, yeah those are massive. So um, if, you had, if you looked at an earlier system, yeah, you wouldn't have seen such large heat sinks. And, yeah. um, and so some of the cool aspects of the heat sinks are, these are all um, vapor chamber heat sinks. So if you, if you look at this, this is how it looks like. Um, this is the bottom way. side. This is the bottom side of the heat sink. Yeah. So this, like for example, this this particular one, right? So if you look underneath it, um, you can see this um, this pipe. Yeah. So it basically, it is a plumbing. So it has some um, liquid inside it. Oh, oh does it? Yeah. interesting. It basically behaves like a refrigerator. So you're liquid, uh, you're liquid cooling your switch. Uh, it is. I should. I don't want to say it's liquid cooling. It's <laughs> you already did. Imagine that's a game. <laughs> no, you, that's not fair, John. <laughs> no, um, but this does sound cool. So. Uh, liquid cooling would usually, I mean, when we say liquid cooling, it usually involves um, an um, closed loop uh, interface wherein you actually plumb. And you got to radiate everything. Yeah, yeah, so you would have a complete closed loop with a. Um, something where um, heat is extracted and you push it out to an exchanger or where you take out the heat, right? Yeah. So in that way, this is not really equivalent uh, because everything is built into it. Um, and um, when I say liquid, it's just a very tiny bit, mm. uh, which vaporizes and changes phase and extract the heat from the center and bring it out to the fins, right? That's, that's the whole aim. That's intense. <laughs> so one thing you would, I mean, this is something you should uh, physically hold it in your hands. Uh, I can't give us a chance. Hold this one and you hold a 
very standard um, aluminum heat sink. You can feel the way. Mm. That's, that's a difference. Though. That's a uh, so everyone knows this is the, that one is much heavier. Yeah. All right. So this is I feel, feel, the, feel the feel the standard one. Oh, this is like a child's toy. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. They don't look much different, but no, they don't. The, the, all the secrets inside this. Uh, wow. Okay, the chamber. I want to get the closer yeah. look at the. So the, these are little pipes, you said. Yeah. Though that's actually the. Um, the place where you inject it and then you close it up, right? Oh, like a, okay. Yeah. And you're saying it's like going through a whole process of evaporating and, and changing yeah, state. Yeah. I think you can look at it, look it up in um, Google and you should be able to find more details on it. It's called vapor chamber heat sinks. Oh, wow. Vapor and chamber heat sinks, okay. Now, is this like the first product you guys had that actually has this feature? Um, this is not exactly the first one that we have had. If you add um, seen a 9500 that also has one okay yeah and uh, as if you uh, the one other problem here is that you have three asics and um, because the airflow is side to side from right to left so if you look here it's from here to here yeah um, the heat produced by this is going to heat up this yeah. one it's going to heat up this one so it's more it's getting more and more thicker so now we are not able to get away without having those that's very cool so that is um, one thing and then um, the other thing which I want to bring up is um, the connector system used on the, um, on the system. So these uh, connector systems are future proof to support um, a higher bandwidth so as we go generations into the um, um, life of this platform yeah. we can have upgrades with supervisor um, upgrades with line card which will support higher speed interfaces. So right now uh, the line card that you have are 100 gig but in the future uh, 400 gig uh, is also so something you, you wouldn't have to possible. upgrade, the, you wouldn't have to replace the switch? You wouldn't have to upgrade the chassis. Oh, the, yeah. the infrastructure or the, the back plane of the chassis um, already has that uh, capacity built in. So, so how, is it up to 400 gig? Yeah. Um, that's my next question. The, Sorry, theoretically, yeah. Yeah. theoretically yeah. how future proof is this? How high can we go? Um, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> and, and we can talk about this too. So this is a display model, so we use this to show... Um, yeah, that's nice. Uh, so basically... Chuck, like you can't put this into production, just remember. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? So here, I think that once you want to take a look at this, yeah. um, the back plane. So I don't know whether it can be seen well or not, but if you look on the back, we have kept it open. So the, the back plane material um, is, um, I mean, though you cannot make out by just looking at it, yeah. um, it's a very low loss material uh, used for the PCB. Um, and the other thing which you would see is um, those blue and red. Yeah. Uh, stuff which is there on the corner, yeah. that those are the bus bars de delivering power into the car. So if you look on the front, um, you can see the connector for the power, which yeah. is right on the um, left hand side here, right? I like you put your hand in there, that's cool. Um, you can see that they are hefty, yeah. and so that's also another pr future proof uh, uh, for delivering power into the cards. Oh, so like the newer cards take more yeah. power? Yeah, um, the newer cards are more going to take more power, we know that already, yeah. Yeah, so you've, oh, that's clever. So in other words, oh, you know that already, huh? <laughs> Chuck, don't, See, just ignore it. But it depends on how you look at it. Um, so as we pack more and more um, bandwidth per unit volume, if you look at the bandwidth, sorry, the power consumed per bandwidth, yeah. that is going down, but we're packing more and more terabits into yeah. the same volume. Yeah. So it is going to draw more power. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good assumption. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's the reason. So, so, uh, so those are the bus bars which deliver power into the into the cards, and those are copper bars which uh, come which are actually connected into the power power modules which are on the bottom of the chassis. Like these are the power modules used on this system. Uh, actually, if you look at it, it's actually a very compact module. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a Two kilowatt on AC PSU. Yes, you know. Yeah. And um, there's one, there's one thing which you would um, see which is different. On actually, I wish we could power it up and show that to you. Is um, oh, you right. next the, time. the logo? This is a lighted logo. I got a plug so, here. We can plug it in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, so this lights up. Yeah, the logo. Yeah. 
and that looks really cool. So I also heard that the logo, okay, see so the logo, I didn't know the logo lights up, but I also heard you can like make it flash or something here, so the person knows which line card to go oh, to. Oh, right. Down. Those are the beacons, yeah. and the, the chassis beacon is this, which yeah, is right sure. here. Yeah. Um, so when, um, so it is something which uh, can be provisioned um, by the um, administrator of the system, yeah. and it will light blue, and a person, if it's, uh, I mean, so a person who's coming to maintain or uh, do um, uh, replace a component in the system, you just need to watch out for that, and uh, and you could basically, or in in the case wherein you don't need to do anything, you can just press this button and. Uh, um, so each of the cards uh, have their own beacon. So the, if you want to just target the supervisor, so the supervisor's beacon is right there. It all, so you can see one aspect uh, which is also driven by Pain Fire and I here. The, um, they're all icon based. There are no text uh, for That's any of the. That's a good point. I didn't really notice that. There's no what? Oh, no, no writing. No writing oh, wow. in text for any it's of all the. Little, little they're icon. all icon based. Yeah. Like emojis. Yeah. <laughs> it's an like, emoji um, switch. <laughs> maybe it's like some, sad. Some of these things are like... Um, Sorry, yeah, Ron. You can probably guess what that is. Like, uh, it, what does it look like? It looks like a prompt. Yeah. Um, so that's the console. Okay. That's, okay, that's cool. clean. That's nice. That's very nice. Yeah. And uh, the S, this one stands for status. And that's the blue beacon. So if you've got two supervisors in... And you need, and someone needs to go and pull out like the top one or, yeah. or one, and he's not sure. You can make that one flash. Exactly. So he gets the right so, one. So each supervisor has its own blue beacon, which you can turn on. Yeah. I imagine you guys have gotten a ton of calls saying, "Can you please fix this for us?" Because we got people pulling out stuff, and <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> so can you talk about like capacity? Because I think that's like how many twenty, how many ten gig could you have on a line card? How many yeah. Gig? So if you look at um, the line cards, which uh, we are calling to come up on the first trade um, you have the 48 port SFP line card yeah. which is right here and the 24 port QSFP so um, so if you populate the whole chassis with um, this line card the SFP line card so it's 48 times 4 so that will be 192 physical ports on the on the chassis yeah and if it is the QSFP line card um, you would get 96. Yeah. yeah. So you would get 96 ports uh, of QSFP. So if you if you put a hundred gig in here, just so that everyone's aware, if you put a hundred gig in at the yes, moment, yes. then this port gets disabled. That, that right? port gets disabled. Yes. But that could that'll change in later. That'll change on a future version of the supervisor. But but if you you, you you could put 20, is it 25 gig in here that you can put in, or is it, or is it like 10 gig? What are the what are the speeds? Yeah. So on um, on the QSFP line card, uh, the 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 QSFP is natively uh, for 40 gig, 100 gig, and beyond. Yeah. Um, but you can convert a QSFP port into a SFP port using an adapter. Um, uh, it's called a QSA adapter, which when you plug it in, it becomes the SFP port. So when you have that adapter, you can support uh, one gig by plugging in a S one gig SFP. You can support ten gig by plugging in a ten gig SFP. And if uh, and twenty five gig can be supported by using a breakout cable. Uh -huh. So you plug in a um, uh, a module uh, which is called as a uh, SFP breakout, yeah. so you can break it out into four SFP, oh, okay. and uh, those SFPs can be uh, 10 gig or 25 gig. So it's four because it's 100 divided by. Sorry, that, it's, that's it's correct. Actually, and yeah. The reason bumper, why yeah. it is four is because of how the QSFP is uh, designed. Yeah. So it, on the electrical side, it actually supports four physical interfaces. Okay. And that's the reason why you can break out QSFP into four uh, electrical. And if you look at the name, it's called QUAD, and yeah. QUAD stands for four interfaces behind it. So it's a four SFP equivalent. That's brilliant. And some other cool things which I want to show us. Yes, please. Um, so you see, you notice that, um, like, okay, let me put this supervisor back. Yeah, so the, um, when I put the supervisor on four, you notice that I put this card, which is empty, on yep. slot three. If this is the configuration that you're using it without a redundant supervisor, you will be forced to put this uh, card, which is basically a blank. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, this blank, we have to enforce it. Uh, it's because if you don't have this card in, uh, 
and you leave the, um, the adjacent slot open, um, air will not want to flow through the heat ah, so the uh, yeah. easy path out, right? the path of least resistance. Yeah. See, not to avoid that, you need to have this um, blank card in it. And the blank cards will be enforced and we use a sensor um, on the chassis. So if you look here, um, you see those um, these, these spring-loaded buttons over here? Let me just get that. You can press that again. Sorry. Yeah, I see that, yeah. Yeah, um, that's actually a um, hall sensor based, uh, sorry, hall effect sensor, which we actually build into the fan tray. So if I pull out the fan tray, I can show that to you. So this will be used by the system software to ensure that a card blank is always present on a slot which is on top of a card. Yeah, so basically, if you, if, you, if you don't have that in, does the switch not power up or? Gives you a warning, or yeah, it gives a warning, and um, it, it is to prevent um, uh, overheat of the AC. Yeah. So if you look on the fan tray, uh, you can see this module which is on the fan tray. Uh, this is the Hall effect sensor which is present on the on the fan tray. So this uh, is actually right behind those um, those spring loaded contacts, and when you inject a card in that. Um, will trigger a signal which will go into the supervisor. And oh, wow. the so software can determine that the so like slot is completely empty or not. Do you get like SNMP trapped if you've enabled that or something? Yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. Yeah. yeah that's the goal of that. And then um, probably this is the right time to show the um, yeah. ASIC. Oh, so you yeah, can see the ASIC. Um, UADP ASIC, which is used on the um, supervisor. It's actually a large device. It's a 55 millimeter square device. You can see how many balls it has. Wow. It, yeah. So this is 2,876 balls. I, on this I was just going to say how many? 2,876. Oh, wow. 2,876. 876. Oh, okay. That's an exam question. <laughs> <laughs> Are there yeah. any other like switches that have like more line cards or? In this, like in this, this series. So currently, this is the only um, platform size, and it's a six slot. That's how the uh, speed of the product is. It's a ninety six oh six, and the R stands for redundancy. Which is because of redundant because supervisors. Of, uh, yeah, the redundant supervisors. Um, so uh, six slots, two slots for the supervisors, and four for the line cuts. And then I saw this, the RFID. Oh, right. So um, all the um, card, all the individual elements of the system have RFID built in. So the um, RFID for the chassis is located on the top of the chassis, like where it's marked RFID. Yeah. Um, the fan tray has the RFID right here. And each of the cards, including the supervisor and the line card, they have the RFID right here inside this ejector. Now, why do we uh, care about yeah, that? Why, why do we want that? What is it? It's uh, mainly for inventory management um, without really having to be physically go and scan a barcode. So, can um, you wave like a, is it like a phone yeah, or something? So, yeah, so the, I think the readers, I, I don't think it's a phone. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a handle instrument. You don't, yeah. you can be like uh, up to uh, it's like an RFID reader. Yeah, you can be easily five feet away from it and you can just walk by. And then read it. Uh, yeah, you cool. might have a rack full of this uh, equipment and you just walk by, you will read in all the. Um, oh, that's good. Uh, okay, all the the old days of going to write down manually yeah. what you got. And you don't need to go and uh, go and, uh, like, if it's got barcode base, yeah. you have to go. Right. You keep on and doing that. And you could that. miss one and yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's troublesome, but you don't miss it when you have RFID scanner. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. How many of these do you have at your house? <laughs> None. <laughs> oh, come on, it's just us. How many? <laughs> he, he doesn't like the noise. <laughs> yeah, no, so that's a question. How does the oh, noise compare in this, like, to 6500? What does that matter? Noise? I mean, because it's going to go in a data. Sure. Okay, yeah. so um, that's a very good point. So the, the noise of the... Um, well, it's looking uh, cool, no noise. It's <laughs> much better than the 6500. So that, that's certainly appreciated. Yeah, so the noise Compared. is a lot lower. No, noise yeah. is a lot lower. And um, that's one critical thing to pass uh, NIMS acoustics. 
So yeah, so um, so it's a measured and compared value. So yeah, I don't want to talk about the numbers, but yeah, sure. Yeah. So the official but, answer is it's, it's definitely quieter than this. this definitely quieter. Okay. Than that, yes, yeah. Which is that's good. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, so if you compare, I mean, if you look at the capacity, and then for that capacity, how many of the sixty five hundred you would have needed, and take that sum total and then compare with this, yeah, certainly much much better. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and just coming back to the price. I mean, we don't know values, but I mean. Again, so one of the, the cool things about this switch is you've got a centralized um, architecture. That's correct. So all the traffic from line car to line, sorry, from even port to port, we go via the, cool. but it's not going to slow down because it's a line rate. Yes. It's one of, uh, one of the other advantages I've heard is that this device runs the same operating system as other switches in the same line. That's correct. So, and it's a single executable. That's also correct. Yeah. So that's yes. really cool. So upgrading really is cool, easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you want to increase the capacity of this uh, switch, you upgrade the, the, the supervisor. supervisor. Yes. You don't have to upgrade like every line card. That's correct. That's so correct. As, an, as a practical example, I just want to summarize, as a practical example today, if you put 100 gig in here, this, car, this port is not available, but later on when you upgrade the supervisor, then you'll be able to get 100, 100 on both. That's correct, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, and the line cards, I mean, like they're, they're almost like dummies now, like they're really simple. Yeah, all the brains and the brown are in the, the supervisors now. That's correct, yeah. Mm. Yes. Making it a lot easier. I want to say thank you very much. Yeah, this That's fantastic. brilliant. Thanks so much for spending some time with us and yeah. showing us the switch. And thanks for all your hard work designing this or being involved in the design and the, and the building of it. Really want to say thanks. Thanks. Brilliant. All right, guys. Well, that was it. Rajesh, dude, thank you so much thank for you so joining much, us. Yeah. I mean, the Catalyst 9K is, is killer. It's, it's the first new edition since, what, 20 years? Since its inception, so that's correct. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> and it's and I'm getting a signal. It is sexy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the main point, the biggest feature. Anyways, thanks guys. That's about it, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. All the best, guys. Thank you.